Hey folks, Jackdaw here. The Dragon Age drought is over for the moment in 2023. We clowns have been fed. The Carnival of Chaos is happy as a brand new Dragon Age Dreadwolf locations and character teaser has dropped. Yours truly has already spent five and a half hours rewatching and breaking this new teaser down live on stream for you all on Dragon Age Day and it was absolutely fabulous. But now I have collected myself a little bit and I've got more of my thoughts together we're breaking everything down in a more condensed video than a five hour live stream from the new bioware blog to this teaser and all the theories in fadis between you're in the right place for the latest on dreadwolf so let's just honk right in my fellow clowns at precisely 5pm on Monday, Dragon Age Day, the Bioware blog released their Dragon Age Day 2023 new blog post. The blog kicked off with heartfelt messages from Bioware's key figures, senior production advisor Mark Dara back in full swing at Bioware, following his re-entry at the studio in spring of this year, and game director Corin Bush. Both of them highlighted the Dragon Age franchise's essence being rich characters and the vast world of Vader. Corrin excitedly shared that Dreadwolf promises a brand new fresh narrative, introducing new characters while hinting at the return of familiar faces for dedicated fans of the franchise. Basically meaning that the Inquisitor is definitely coming back. Come on, surely please give my Inquisitor some closure with Solas, along with other favourites. I've already made my own video listing 10 characters whom I would love to see in Dreadwolf and who kind of make sense to be in this narrative, so do check that out if if you're interested in my own picks, but share your faves down below who you want to see in Dad, who could make a logical sense to be in this next narrative. Corin then goes on to acknowledge the Dragon Age world's significance to fans and assures them that the team is taking their time to get it right. An encouraging move, especially considering past rushed Bioware developments a la Anthem, Andromeda, even the Mass Effect franchise and previous Dragon Age entries. Equally explaining the 10 year wait for Dread Wolf. The team, fueled by the fandom's passions, celebrates Dragon Age Day by sharing sneak peeks of in-game locations, hinting at hidden details for eagle-eyed fans who listen closely. Now stay tuned as I fully uncover each of these gems and listen closely for even more secrets. But we've still got more of this blog to talk about. Closing the opening segment, the blog amplifies anticipation for the full reveal of Dragon Age Dreadwolf in the summer of 2024 hinting at imminent answers that we haven't even thought to ask yet. Truly exciting to hear that Dragon Age Dreadwolf is real and it's going to be revealed next summer. This full reveal in the middle of 2024 will apparently include new trailers, that's plural, gameplay footage and the long awaited release date. Finally, this game is coming out and we're gonna know its exact release date in about six months time. Bioware teases that the Dread Wolf will rise once more, promising a ton more details as we approach the summer of 2024. With Bioware saying that the Dread Wolf will rise once more, is this like the full on splash reveal and then the release date is going to be like three, four, five months later on? With them saying one more time, it's as if like this is a final marketing effort and then the game's coming out? Or are they just kind of having a bit of fun with the verbiage of Solas rising? Who knows, but I will talk more about my initial expectations for the release window towards the end of this video. In the same measure, with the substantial amount of content teased for this full reveal, speculation does arise. Is this going to be Bioware's own Dragon Age event, like a Dragon Age live stream, Dragon Age show, or is it going to be EA Play Live 2024, which has been notably absent in recent years, and we assume that's just because of lack of content, you know, they've shown Star Wars off at other shows, and Battlefield has obviously been an absent recently, but could this full reveal of Dad be shown off at a new EA Play next year. It's just the sheer volume of content that is mentioned here suggests that this full reveal is going to be more than just a gameplay trailer shown at Summit Games Fest 2024 in the first week of June. Now they could just obviously follow up with more trailers released online after the event, but even so I feel like this could be Bioware's own event or a brand new EA Play 2024. Regardless, Bioware does say stay tuned on their social medias for more information on Dreadwolf and this 
full reveal when it comes around next year and of course you're already in the right place for the moment we hear when this is going down. We're going to be getting the popcorn, we're probably going to dress up as clowns one last time at this full reveal because us clowns go hard and I think it's probably going to be the last time we can actually clown Dragon Age and we would actually be getting Dragon Age content at this reveal so I think it would be in good humour. Moving on though, the blog ominously reveals that the Dread Wolf has not been idle in recent years. His reach is far and soon his plans will come to fruition. A cataclysmic rejoining of magic and realms hundreds of years in the making. Lust suggesting just how close Solas is to destroying the Veil. Hopefully we'll have a chance to stop him, unless like the Veil's destruction is literally the first thing that happens at the start of Dad and there's literally no hope. The blog then unfolds with huge story and location references. It states, you visited the lands of Thedas thrice before in our games and many more times in comics, books, art and short stories. This time you'll be venturing to places unseen and returning to places from long ago. Now for me, the mention of revisiting places from long ago sparks speculation about delving into long lost memories in the Fade, unravelling the mysteries of the Elven Empire, the Titans, the Black City, the Vale's formation at Skyhold, the betrayal of Mafal, the deception of the Elven Gods with Fen Harel, and so, so much more. That's just my take though, it could just simply refer to returning to Skyhold, maybe Ferelden for a hot second, or somewhere else, maybe even just an Inquisition, since it's actually been so long since that game came out. Let's be real. The blog then introduces a paragraph with a most impactful quote. We stand upon the precipice of change. This line is from Flemeth as her words to Hawk in Dragon Age 2, hinting at the looming abyss and the courage to leap into the unknown. Could this foreshadow Hawk's potential return if trapped in the Fade since Inquisition? Or are these words ushering in this inevitable plummet into the abyss as a critical moment in the Dragon Age? Continuing on, the blog emphasises the vastness of the world in Dreadwolf, now teetering on the edge of a knife. Previous games showcased slices of Thedas, war-ravaged Ferelden, corrupt Kirkwall, and politically charged Orlay. This time, Thedas unfolds in greater detail, offering glimpses of the Anderfels' desolate badlands, Antiva's canals and towers, and Ravain's turquoise seas, among others. The expansion this time around allows for a richer narrative, introducing many more locations than previous games, as Bioware states, including both some you've longed to go to and some you've never heard of before. As a quick rapid fire of locations I've longed to go to without any context for Dreadwolf, Kalsharok, Siharan, The Black City, Parvalen, Arlafan, Beyond the Sea, Navara, just to name a few, do give me yours down below and we can compare when Dreadwolf does come out. But with more Thedas than ever before, to explore, the hope this time around is that these new locations in Dread Wolf won't suffer from the bloat experienced in Inquisition's open worlds. Quality, not quantity, please Bioware, and no more shards this time around. Now the blog also shares a segment on Solas, stating the Dread Wolf being an insult that he took as a badge of pride, an insult to inspire hope in his friends and fear in his enemies. That is what Fen Harel the Dread Wolf truly is, not a man who sees himself as evil, but someone who believes he's fighting for a good cause and is willing to get his hands dirty. Lus highlighting Solas as a very much nuanced character, underscoring that he isn't a simplistic villain. Instead, Solas is a complex individual with inherently good intentions, albeit choosing questionable methods to achieve them. Hopefully, this morality does play into our choices once we inevitably catch up to him in Dread Wolf. Now, you can actually wish List Dragon Age Dreadwolf on Steam right now and I will have the link in the description. The Steam description of Dad sets the stage for the game. Enter the world of Thedas, a vibrant land of rugged wilderness, treacherous labyrinths and glittering cities. Steeped in savage combat and secret magics, now the fate of this world teeters on a knife's edge. That's twice already that Bioware have mentioned the fate of Thedas teetering on a knife's edge. In a literal interpretation, 
mention of the phrase teetering on a knife's edge, I think Solas's interest in getting the Red Lurium Idol lie in its ability to transform into a ritual blade so he can then destroy the veil, as seen in the 2022 Dragon Age Day key cinematic. With that, the fate of Fadus quite literally teeters on a knife's edge. A clever play of words by Bioware. But you can't fool me and my tinfoil hat. Also, just want to throw this one out there because I didn't mention it in my Red Lyrium Idol breakdown video, but Red Lyrium can store memories. If the idol well and truly does belong to Solas, what if our new hero retrieved it and could then see Solas's memories that he has with the idol, thus explaining how exactly and why exactly the idol belongs to him? How cool would that be? But with that, let's take this all up a notch and dissect the entirety of the Thedas Calls teaser. First on our exploration is Antiva, a nation famous for its wine, guild of assassins, and rich merchant history, which is unfortunately under the looming threat of Kunari invasion, a plot point teased in prior trailers to Vintonites and concept art. The artwork for Antiva on the Dragon Age Day blog stated, ever the pinnacle of mystery and intrigue, the crows watch from the deep shadows of beautiful Antiva. Something, however, is amiss, and they are set on uncovering the source. Now surprisingly, this teaser introduces Treviso, a new city in Antiva where key events in Dreadwolf may transpire. Treviso, borrowing its name from a real Italian city, adds a touch of real life influence to Antiva. Positioned just north of Antiva City, it plays a significant role, especially as foreseen in Tevinter Nights. As hinted in the brand new dialogue from this new character, We fight for everyone, and we always will. The crows rule Antiva. It suggests that Antiva will witness invasion by the Cunari Antam, with the Antivan crows taking on a military role, but the crows in backing down. Notably, this trailer potentially introduces Antivan crow Andratia Cantori, or Tia, portrayed by Carolina Ravasa, known for her role as Sombra in Overwatch. Last seen in Dragon Age Deception, Tia exposed a crow scheme for a peaceful invasion of Antiva by the Cunari. Since then, she's ventured to Antiva City with Viago de Riva, her partner, aiming to alert the nobles and recruit more talons to the Antivan Crows. The questions arise, will Tia become a companion for our new hero, or is her role limited to key narrative moments? Either way, her significant presence in the narrative is expected as we explore Treviso and uncover what lurks beyond the city. While Treviso boasts beauty with its regal, Disney-like architecture, calming atmosphere, picturesque night sky, and although we can't quite see it from this trailer, it is a coastal setting, equally matched with its mountains in the background, there is underlying tension suggesting imminent conflict among the city. And that, my dear friends, refers to the Cunari flags raised above a few of the buildings in the city, hinting at a potential peaceful invasion of Treviso. This is thanks to the help of my friend Lambo, but with parts of this city representing the Cunari Antam, yet none of it under siege, at least what we can see, it kind of suggests that the city has willingly negotiated a peaceful invasion of the Cunari, like the intended negotiation with Emile Cortez in Eight Little Talons, who intended on sealing a deal with the Cun in exchange for eliminating all the Antivan Crow leaders. Has this happened to Treviso? Thus explaining why the city is not under siege by impending Cunari threat, because they've undergone some kind of peace treaty, allowing the Cunari to just invade and take over, with the remaining Antivan crows not stopping the fight. Who knows, definitely excited to see. Either way, Treviso, with its allure, conceals a brewing storm as the crows brace for the Cunari's presence, however that may be in dad. Next on our journey is Ravain, the homeland of our beloved pirate admiral, and it's a very much surprising destination in Dreadwolf, in my opinion. Ravain's recent activities, especially with the introduction of the new faction, the Lords of Fortune, who are treasure hunters, hasn't been widely explored, and I don't really know much else about Ravain that hasn't already been specified in the new stories in Twinter Nights. The official artwork paints Ravain as, upon eastern shores and sun-kissed sands, the 
Lords of Fortune no longer hold dominion over the coasts of Ravain, not when dragons are growing bolder and laying waste to their ships. The coastal nation of Ravain presents a new, exciting, beautiful bay area, and the sight of the corpses resembling sea monsters or dragons raises intriguing lore and gameplay possibilities. Villeg Ravain is going to be a hunting ground for high level dragons and sea monster fights, and I'm all here for that. As well as like treasure hunting and maybe, just maybe, deep sea diving for loot, as hinted at in previous concept art. But with dragons soaring above Ravain's skies and an octopus slash squid symbolising the region, I have a heap of speculation leaning towards that carcass on the beach being a sea monster, or perhaps, even more excitedly, a creation of Gilanan, the mother of the Harla, rather than it being a defeated dragon. And before I do delve into this, I've got to say that I am very much open to the idea of having Isabella sail us around on a ship, visiting Treviso to Ravain, back over to Tevinter, and onto the shores of Saharan. Look at those beautiful turquoise waters. It's glorious. I want to jump in. My gosh, Bioware. But getting to what I'm most consumed about regarding this scene, it's the character in the voiceover. They're introduced as a spooky character with a rugged tone, sounding as if they've smoked a pack of Marlboro, proclaiming... Glory to the risen gods. They come to deliver this world. This reference to Risen Gods aligns with the notion of the Evanuris, of course, suggesting the Dread Dwarf's plan to destroy the Vale and somehow release the Elven Gods, but I do think there is more to it than just that. Considering the sea creatures that pollute Ravain and its imagery, and we have previous concept art of evil gods and sea creatures, we also have the Executors, a shadowy syndicate that speak on, quote, behalf of powers across the sea, end quote, and they become a compelling concept for this VO character. You see, in Tevinter Nights, an executor's voice lacked gender or age distinctions, adding such an air of mystery to them. If sea creatures or Gilanan's creations rise with the Veil's destruction, the executors may actually worship them, anticipating their awakening as they speak on behalf of powers across the sea. The speculation extends to the return of Gilanan if the elven gods are somehow freed from the Veil's destruction. I believe that the executors are an ancient elven cult of Gilanan, and I have a much connected theory on that in a dedicated video if you'd like to get behind that, but there's so much reasoning to believe that the executors have a huge correlation to Gilanan. Now maybe this part is a bit too far-fetched, but Ravain is a coastal nation and the executors do come from beyond the sea. Maybe they don't come from Ravain, but they may have settled here for a little bit. I don't know, but equally this nation is featured in Dreadwolf for a specific reason, and I wonder if sea monsters and the executors will play some part in Ravain. Even further, Solas believes that the executors are dangerous, almost as if they've personally done something to Solas to earn that reputation. So I do think that the executors either way are going to be an unpredictable ally in Dreadwolf, and so could this character represent one? Are they in Ravain? What is the crack? Moving on to the Anderfels, a kingdom famed as the Grey Warden's birthplace in Northwest Thedas, the artwork depicts the Anderfels as to the far west. Three Grey Wardens patrol the Anderfels. Tremors have been creating disturbances of late. Their cause is unknown. Upon the distant horizon, a storm of ominous intent brews and darkens the skies. Now believe it or not, but the Anderfels are bleak and blighted lands consisting of large deserts, hot summers, and many uninhabited territories. In this teaser sequence, we see Fortress Weishaupt, the Grey Warden's headquarters, covered in darkness with lightning striking across the land. The fortress is surrounded with these circular lightning rods that also look like griffin flying paths or maybe even the iconography of some risen god doing some kind of ritual on the poor wardens. Bless their hearts. Now there was a piece of concept art that showcased a fade rift green blur assaulting the warden headquarters as if the rift was opening up or as if the veil was being destroyed or something was coming out like an elven god or maybe even hawk or the warden 
Warden in Inquisition who got trapped in the fate. It is ominous as heck, and with the above description of a storm, ominous intent brewing and darkening the skies, something bad is going to happen at Weishaupt, I can feel it in my Warden blood. And even if we look a little bit further into this picture, we can see what looks like red lyrium tendrils almost covering up the entrance to the fortress. It initially reminded me of the 2020 EA Play sequence where we saw that red lyrium titan heart thing that's alive and bloating and the red lyrium tendrils are everywhere and that could absolutely represent Fortress Weishaupt. However, at the time of that being early in production, it seems like it's got a lot of reused assets and when I did break that down back in 2020, I did say that it reminded me of Skyhold but anything's possible and it was all concept footage anyway so it could still resemble Weishaupt with these red lyrium tendrils covering all over the place. Now although the place is known for the blight, you know, you've got the Darkspawn and the Wardens both having a home in the Underfells, it definitely seems like something has already gone wrong within the footage of Fortress Weishaupt. And now we have the VO. Obviously the character from this is a Grey Warden and upon hearing them I just get Timothy Dalton's voice and I cannot get it out of my head. So just give Timothy Dalton a listen and let's compare to this Warden. I love the idea of being in Toy Story. I didn't know what I was going to play initially. I just love the idea of being in it, you know. I'm so that voice, folks, with this. Ray Wardens don't hide in our castle. Do you see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? Ray Wardens don't hide in our castle. I won't ask good soldiers to turn tail and run. If Timothy Dalton is indeed in Dreadwolf, it is incredibly ironic that Bioware can pay for such a massively talented actor, yet not pay their laid off employees a decent severance amount. But I digress. I feel like this warden could be the aged on his calling Grey Warden Ramesh from Tevinter Knights, the horror of Homer. If you don't know him, Ramesh is a senior Grey Warden and has been one for over two decades, and he recently faced disturbing horrors at Hormak, where his party encountered elven terrors and a Grey transformative pool. That resembled Gilanan, the mother of the Hala. One of his Grey Warden comrades sacrificed themselves, urging Ramesh to warn others of this impending doom. Since then, we assume that Ramesh's quest has been to continue to deal with the elven horror threat and warn the rest of the wardens at Weishaupt. And in this video, if this is Ramesh, having had someone sacrifice himself so he could live, he's now not going to let his fellow wardens turn tail and run. They're not going to hide in their castle, but instead face the horror that awaits them front on. Already giving him some element of character development, if that is indeed true. I could have just made it up though. But it's just so epic and I really can't wait to see the context behind this scene. Because folks, shit is going down in Weishaupt. We already know that based on earlier this year when we had that gameplay leak and there was like a dragon inside Weishaupt and Red Lyrium all over the place, but the Grey Wardens ain't gonna have a good time in Dragon Age Dreadwolf. I can just tell. And lastly, but certainly not least, the teaser zooms out from Tevinter, unveiling the surrounding countries of Fadus set to feature in Dreadwolf, with Tevinter, of course, at the very centre of this map. Tevinter was once the ancient elf motherland, believe it or not, and it now stands as the most demonised nation in Thedas due to its conquest by humans in recent ages. But crucially, our attention shifts to the male antagonist in this closing scene, sparking speculation about their identity. Who the hell is this new individual who seeks peace and comfort and would like to reign over Thedas themselves? All the world will soon share the peace and comfort of my reign. Are they a Tevinter Magister? And by that I mean like a modern day Tevinter Magister in the Magisterium, like a Dragon Cultist or a Blood Mage. Are they one of the seven Sidereal, the original seven Magisters who breached the heavens and broke into the Golden City and made it black like Corypheus or the Architect or somebody else? Is it Archon Radonis, the current leader of the Magisterium, or is it somebody entirely new? Well, I've got somebody who I do have in mind, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's talk about the voice actors. I've seen across my stream Liam O'Brien, Patrick Stewart, Hawk, Stroud. Now, I have no clue, of course, but I do think this could be Matthew Yang King. All right, so this is Illidan Stormrage. Akama. Oh. Your duplicity is hardly surprising. 
I should have slaughtered you and your malformed okay, brethren that, that long ago. Sound. Yeah. So that we've come to end. That world will that is, share the peace and kind of sound very, that is very spot, similar. That, yeah. that is very. So who was the voice actor behind that? Then that is spot on. Ah, uh, Yang Yang King. Uh, oh God. So who is it? Right, well, let me talk about the 2020 Game Awards trailer first. So a fresco from that Game Awards trailer, painted by Solas, unveiled a core aspect of Solas's post veil destruction plan. The fresco featured the Dread Wolf emerging from the Black City, which was infused with Red Lyrium. Alongside Solas in this fresco were two figures resembling specific Illuvians and specific statues that we saw in the ancient elven libraries known as the Via de Fara. Straight up those figures being in the Vida Fara suggest the involvement of the evil elven gods, although their specific identities do remain elusive. Initial thoughts for me when I first saw this fresco were it could be the elven twins Falandin and Durfaman, or it could be Gilanan and Durfaman. However, a closer look suggests that I think one of them is Elganan, the elven god of vengeance and the sun, and leading the pantheon as the Allfather with Allmother Mafal. And that's exactly who I think this voice could be. Elganan, the true proper antagonist of Dragon Age Dreadwolf, once Solas destroys the veil and releases the elven gods. Elganan and Mephal are closely linked to Fenharel's redemption, to break the veil represented as the sun and the moon, respectively. And what I mean by that is, we have this emergent compendium prophecy, which directly refers to the moon and the sun and Fenharel right in the middle. And that being two shadowed spheres among stars, an eclipse as Fen Harel stirred. It pinpoints the Dread Wolf rising with some credit to Elganan and Mafal. As a whole, there's so much representation behind Elganan, and Mafal's murder by her own kind, including her husband, adds even more to the mix, especially with Flemeth wanting to seek Mafal's vengeance to the Evanuris, and coincidentally, Elganan is the god of vengeance. So, since being released with Solas somehow destroying the veil with the ritual blade, does Elganan Elganan now have his sights on Thedas alongside another elven god, maybe Gilanan, given how much I've already talked about her during this video. As Solas splits the veil and somehow they escape his grasp or whatever happens, they're now wreaking havoc on Thedas, with Elganan claiming his own peace and comfort with his reign over Thedas. Now I'm going to talk more about Elganan as a villain in an upcoming dedicated video, fully unearthing him, his power past and future goals. Alternatively, if this isn't Elganan, it's going to be some kind of evil god, some risen god, building up to the narrative of Dreadwolf being about evil gods rising, with heroes also rising to stop them. Maybe this figure could somehow represent the unblighted old gods, Razakale and Lusakan, which aligns with the potential future blights that remain. Either way though, it's going to be some evil god. Whoever they are, whoever they may be, they are rising in the next dragon game, and that's not just Solas rising as the Dread Wolf. It seems that something beyond his control is going to be set loose onto the realm of our new hero aiming to stop it, if they can even confront another god, let alone Solas. Towards the conclusion of this sequence, as the title Dread Wolf emerges, there's a dragon's growl accompanied with a wolf's howl. Rain. This for me straightly aligns with the concept of a draconic dread wolf teased into Winter Nights, possibly hinting at Solas' transformation involving Mephal's power, now rendering his dread wolf form more dragon-like. In summary of this teaser and the Bioware blog, now as well as these all being locations we're going to visit, are each of them also going to be origins for our new hero? If so, then we could play as an Antivan Crow, a Ravani Lord of Fortune, or a Ravani Dragon Slayer or an executor if my tie with the executors and Ravain kind of comes full circle, an Anderfell's Grey Warden, and a Tevinter Shadow Dragon, or Tevinter Sakari, or Tevinter Lucerne, or Tevinter Magister, or you know how many factions are in Tevinter, we could belong to many of them. I feel like that could also just be as apt, meaning that this teaser represents new locations, new characters, as well as potential hero backgrounds for our Rook. And that also marries up really well 
all with the 2020 Game Awards trailer where we got more or less similar locations with Weishaupt and Tiva, that Navarra could be Ravain location, as well as their ending then on Tevinter. But lastly, the biggest conversation of them all, when is Dreadwolf coming out? Well, we do have now confirmation that the game is going to be fully revealed next summer. But when are we going to have our hands on it ourselves? I have two answers for this. The optimist inside of me would love to say they're going to Bethesda it and they're going to full on give it a massive summer reveal next year and also adding that little blog point where they said the Dread Wolf will rise once more. They're going to give us a massive full blown reveal and then they're going to go, right, the game's coming out in five months from now, November 22nd, 2024, whatever. And I would absolutely love that. And also they did say that like the time is close at hand and Dragon Age Dread Wolf is fast approaching. And as we know, the game is currently in its alpha phase. And so it's nearing its final stages of development onto launch period. So by all accounts, it certainly still could come out next year. However, the realist inside of me, knowing that Dreadwolf has gone through like sheer development hell and so many pivots and reboots and reworks and, and now recently layoffs and sacking QA testers, as well as that leak back in February stating that the game didn't feel fully complete even though we didn't have any context on what specific alpha build of the game they were playing, they felt that the game still needed a couple years left to properly polish it. And so with that, I feel more comfortable saying spring 2025, just if we are being realistic. But that's just my speculation. That's just what I think. I would love to know what you think. When do you think we're going to see Dragon Age Dread Wolf? It's in fact just good enough news for me that we're going to be getting a release date next year and we're going to be seeing it in full swing. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not clowning the Game Awards in a couple of days from now. I am absolutely clowning the Game Awards. The full reveal is coming out summer. But what about a small, tiny reveal at the Game Awards 2023? We'll find out soon enough. But yes, if you are interested in clowning along with me, all in jest with my fellow clown friends, please join us for the carnival of fun and chaos to return as we enjoy watching the Game Awards and anticipate Dragon Age Dread Wolf's reveal with every single fantasy game or mention of a dragon. But please let me know all of your thoughts on this teaser. What did you think of it? Is there anything that I missed? What do you want to see in Dread Wolf? Appreciate all those who have watched this in its entirety. It's a big, long one, so thank you all so, so much. But I'll see you at the Game Awards, and until then, I've been Jack Daw, and I should go and get my clown makeup on right now. <laughs>